Does the gentlewoman from the District of Columbia seek recognition? I move that the House suspend the rules and greet you the bill, H.R. 7535. The gentlewoman intend to concur in the Senate amendment? Yes. 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 The clerk will report the title of the bill. H.R. 7535, an act to encourage the migration of federal government information technology systems to quantum resistance, cryptology, and for other purposes, Senate amendment. Pursuant to the rule, the gentlewoman from the District of Columbia, Mrs. Norton, and the gentlewoman from New Mexico, Ms. Harrell, each will control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentlewoman from the District of Columbia. I ask unanimous consent that all members have five legislative days in which to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous material on this measure. Without objection. I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentlewoman is recognized. Madam Speaker, I strongly support the Quantum Computing Cyber Security Preparedness Act. Last year, a Congressman Kana came to me about a grave national security threat looming on the horizon. Today, the processes we use to encrypt data are very reliable and can keep sensitive data secure during storage or transmission, but tomorrow they may no longer, that may no longer be the case. Researchers around the world are making rapid advances toward quantum computing, which is the application of quantum physics to allow computers to perform calculations many magnitudes faster and more powerful, powerfully than they do today. While quantum computers have the potential to provide considerable benefits to society, it is also increasingly likely that they could allow our adversaries to break the best encryption we are capable of today. Capabilities of this magnitude are likely still a decade or more in the future, but China and other adversaries are expected to begin stealing sensitive encrypted data much sooner to unlock it when they have the capacity to do so. It is essential that the federal government prepare for this inevitability now while we have time to protect data that is critical to our national and economic security. The process of migrating all federal IT systems to quantum resistant cryptography will be complex and costly uh, but we need to start laying the groundwork for this today. I want to applaud Mr. Connor, as well as Ms. Mace and Mr. Connolly and Senator Hassan for introducing the Senate companion. Uh, all of them for putting forth a thoughtful bipartisan bill to establish that very process. This bill would require the Office of Management and Budget to quickly issue guidance requiring federal agencies to create and maintain inventories of all cryptographic systems currently in use, as well as all federal IT systems that could be vulnerable to future quantum computers. Within a year, OMB would be required to submit to Congress a strategy for addressing the risk posed by quantum computing, allowing time for the assessment of this strategy before the National Institute of Standards and Technology, uh, which, which is, ex is expected to issue its standards for how to deal with quantum computing in 2024. The OMB would then be required to issue guidance requiring agencies to develop a plan to migrate their IT systems to quantum resistant cryptography using those standards and to consult with the chief information, off information officers council to prioritize agency IT systems for migration based on risk. The bill before us today provides more concrete direction to support this vision, and I urge my colleagues 
to support it. I reserve the balance of my time. The gentlewoman reserves. The gentlewoman from New Mexico is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentlewoman is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. As we wind down the 117th Congress, I'm glad to be here supporting final passage of the Quantum Computing Cybersecurity Preparedness Act, a bipartisan bill the House sent to the Senate just this past July. After the Senate made technical perfecting edits, we are here today to consider sending H.R. 7535 to the President. As an emerging technology, quantum computing holds great promise and potential peril for our nation. While the technology continues to rapidly develop with potential to improve computing capabilities for American research and the economy, there is a clear risk that foreign adversaries like China will be using this technology for malicious purposes. One such risk is that our foreign adversaries may use the first quantum computers to unlock data that has already been stolen from U.S. federal agencies. Current data encryption methods are nearly impossible to decrypt with today's computing capabilities. However, mature quantum computing systems could unlock our most sensitive information. This is a clear national security threat. The Quantum Computing Cybersecurity Preparedness Act will require a government-wide strategy to better secure valuable government data. While the federal government already has initiatives underway to address these emerging, emerging threats, such as recent Presidential National Security Directive, H.R. 7535, makes, clear, makes this a clear congressional priority. Advancing a strategic approach to evaluating quantum computing risks federal IT and network cybersecurity is important given the significant potential risk to our public sector data. I thank my House Oversight Committee colleagues, Representative Ro Khanna and Nancy Mace, for their work on this important bill. I encourage my colleagues to support this bill, and I reserve the balance of my time. The gentlewoman reserves. The gentlewoman from the District of Columbia is recognized. Uh, Madam Speaker, I reserve. The gentlewoman reserves. The gentlewoman from New Mexico is recognized. Madam Speaker, I yield three minutes to the gentlewoman from South Carolina, Ms. Nancy Mace. The gentlewoman from South Carolina is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise today in support of the Quantum Computing, Computing Cybersecurity Preparedness Act. I want to first thank Congressman Ro Khanna and Ranking Member Comer for their assistance in helping craft this important legislation. There's no doubt Congressman Khanna has been a leader in this Congress on cybersecurity measures. And uh, coming from a, a cyber and technology background to Congress, being able to serve with him and put this bill together Heading on to what looks like the desk of the president to be signed into law is no small feat. Cybersecurity is national security, and today we're going to vote on this bill and send it to the president of the United States to be signed into law. H.R. 7535 will help future-proof the security of sensitive data and information with federal agencies used in support of their missions. Quantum computing might sound like something far and away, very far, far off in the future, but we face the threat of real adversaries stealing very sensitive information, encrypted information from the federal government, the hope of unlocking it in the future. That threat is here and that threat is real today. In 2020, there were 11 federal agencies that were hacked by agents of Russia and China. So there's no time like the present to put legislation like this through. We need to strengthen and protect our nation's systems and keep our data secure. And now we'll have the opportunity to see the, the progress that, that we're making in the federal government through this annual report through OMB. Transitioning to a post-quantum cryptography is a necessary step to ensure federal agencies' sensitive information remain secure from prying eyes. The future of quantum computing brings with it both significant opportunities and significant risks. But I'm very optimistic about the power of quantum computing and the technology advances that we're making in this frontier. We want to make sure that we encourage all of our colleagues uh, to vote for this measure today and I look forward to its passage and being signed into law. And I yield back. The gentlewoman yields. The, ge the gentlewoman from the District of Columbia is recognized. I'm sorry. Madam Speaker, if the gentlewoman from New Mexico has no further speakers, I am prepared to close. The gentlewoman from the district is reserved. The gentlewoman from New Mexico is recognized. Madam Speaker, I have no further speakers, and I am prepared to close. 
The gentlewoman is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I encourage my colleagues to support this bipartisan bill that addresses an emerging national security issue. I yield back the balance of my time. The gentlewoman yields. The gentlewoman from the district is recognized. Madam Speaker, I urge concurrence in the Senate uh, amendment uh, and, uh, and to H.R. 7. Three, uh, seven. I'm sorry, it's seven five three five, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentlewoman 